Israel has now painted itself as the antagonist in a new chapter of history. That's how we can see things. No matter what it succeeds to do in terms of taking land, taking all of Gaza, transform whatever it is, it is now the evil empire. And it's the antagonist in a new chapter of history. That chapter cannot ever be closed until a resolution occurs, as in any story. And that resolution must entail justice. And it must entail the downfall of the antagonist. And it must entail the success and the, the, the triumph of the protagonist, the victims here, the Palestinian people. And if it's not going to be one generation, it'll be the next generation. It doesn't have to happen in one set of 10 years or five years. But no different than how the Nazis became the antagonists of that chapter of history. Going in and doing things, I think universally we can agree, had to be stopped. That chapter in history could not come to an end unless the Nazis suffered and collapsed and were brought to their knees and were finished. Nazism and Zionism essentially are a form of racism and, and superiority, ethnic superiority. There's no, what is the difference between the two? One group is telling us this is their land because of their racial superiority and because it is, they are who they are and God gave them the land, etc. The other group was saying we're blonde hair and blue eyes are superior race. Do you see a difference? One group said, do you get causing all of our problems? Let's er remove you from the, from the country with a final solution. And these guys are saying no different, except they just haven't worded it as a final solution, although that's what it is. And that's what they're doing. So New York Times today saying why we should root for Israel to win and why we want Israel to win, you have already lost. You may gain land. You may succeed in advancing yourself as the evil empire. But make no mistake, the world is the audience and the world has determined that you are the antagonist of this new chapter in history. A story cannot end without a resolution. The human being just doesn't live like this. You, don't, you do an oppression and it just, just continues. The only way it continues is if you were to wipe away everybody altogether the way the Australians, the Canadians, and the Americans did. But at that time, there wasn't a global audience. So you could actually get away with it. And by the time the world figured out what you're doing, there are no Native Americans left, except for a handful. And you give them a day, you start putting them on coins, you start giving them statues, and you start honoring them before public speeches, because it's all over now. They're not bothering you anymore. But this is not the case. This is not the case because by making, as Elon Musk, when he was sane before he went and got spanked by Netanyahu in Israel, and was, was made to go to detention, which is a tour of Auschwitz with Ben Shapiro, he was talking common sense. And he was saying, let's just look at this logically. For every time you go after Hamas, for every one person you kill, you create two people who hate you. And the ratio is probably more like one to a thousand. Is that Palestinians are not one small group of people. All the Arabs are watching. Now the whole world is watching. The whole world is watching this. I go and I see British soccer guys who all they have post about is, is British football, they're like the most outspoken people on Twitter. Like they can't stand what they're seeing. I'm seeing Irish people, Korean people, have no business, uh, ethnically at least, or religiously, with Palestinians or Muslims. They're just as humans. So unlike Australia, unlike what Americans did to Native Americans, and unlike what the Canadians did, there's no going back from this. Whereas the Canadian, those three countries... There, were, there was not a global audience to say, hey, what about this? How does this end? So they were, and they were able, that's number one. Number two, they were able to completely erase those people until they're only a handful of insignificant minority that can't do anything. But you're not doing this in, in Palestine. You're not eliminating all the Arabs. You're not eliminating all the Muslims. So where are you going with this war? The hatred that exists in people for you has multiplied beyond what they say, uh, what is the mathematical term they say, whatever it is. It's, it's, got, it's not going like this, it's going like this. You're not going to last on the earth when billions of people hate you. They, you may have power over them now. And why do I say it like this? Because in our understanding of at temkin fil art, Sayyidina Yusuf was mumakkan fil ard. Inna makkanna lahu. We establish him. What does it mean when Allah says he establishes a people on the earth? 
it means the people of the earth love him. And whatever institutions they run, they establish them in that institution. They give them positions. They protect them. Establishment on the earth has nothing to do with money and buildings and armies. It has to do with the hearts of the people of the earth. Eventually, those that money, those armies, those countries, those buildings will be inherited by people who hate you. That's exactly the meaning of being established on the earth. So Elon Musk in that quote was probably the most sensible thing. He was saying, have you succeeded if all you're doing is creating more people who hate you? I don't know where they're going with this. This is a, it's it, no matter how much land they take and who they kill, they have lost because they're now the antagonist on the global stage. And the story cannot hum, humanity, the hu, human beings, their hearts will not allow for this to end until we see the downfall of the antagonist. That's the nature of all stories. Somebody said, uh, Arab leaders, they're, 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 inactive they're not just inactive and passive as i commented on them they're complicit so we have to ask the question what have we done as an ummah that allah ta'ala has elevated over us and given absolute control to do whatever they want with us such a vicious and merciless and nasty cowardly enemy well i'll tell you what here's another way to look at it if a muslim dies having never repented from his sins. This person will be purified in the next life. In what? In hell. And Allah Ta'ala has established angels called Zabaniyah that punish. So we even hold something far worse than the Israelis. The Zabaniyah will apply far worse punishment. Except the Zabaniyah themselves are not bad. They're angels. They're gonna, but what they're doing to people who go to Jahannam of the Muslims, of the believers, and the believers of all past nations included, and the levels of heaven are seven. The top one is for people who are believers. Their core essence, belief, they, they did the most important thing. They submitted to God and his prophet. After that, though, they live terrible lives. So they can't enter paradise with that. They won't enjoy it if they did. Now they need to be purified. So they get put into this level of hell called Jahannam. It's the least of all punishment, and it's a worse punishment such that if a person was to stick a finger in it, they would not remember any pleasure in this life. And so it shouldn't surprise us that Allah has re elevated over us such an enemy as Israel, as the Zionists, as the Americans who are now sending troops, by the way, and our congressmen and all of our pundits and all of these, the British and uh, every newspaper run by Rupert Murdoch and all of these terrible human beings. The only difference is that these torturers of ours, and I say ours not because we've been tortured personally, anyone here or even the viewers, but we're a one ummah. These torturers of ours, they themselves will go to hell. Unlike the Zabania that are working for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as angels of hell. But the result is the same. So this is how we view our pain here. All of our suffering here. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, my ummah. His purification occurs in this life before the next.